So in the last class we have discussed about what is correlation effect and we discussed the molar pressure perturbation theory as one of the probable way of incorporating the correlation effect. In this class we are going to show how we are going to incorporate correlation effect using variational principle using configuration interaction. So in the configuration interaction the wave function is determined by the variational principle and where you take an expectation value of the Hamiltonian with a well behaved trial wave function which satisfy the boundary condition and this is the normalization factor and the value what you get from this expectation value will be always either equal or higher than the exact energy and this equation is actually is called relative variation theorem. By doing that you can determine the wave function in the case of configuration interaction you take a linear combination of various configurations that is Slater determinant. Configuration essentially means they are various Slater determinants generated out of the Hattrefop and this linear combination of these determinants are taken to describe the wave function of the system. So let us say in this case the full CI wave function is actually expressed as a linear combination of singly excited, doubly excited, triply excited and so on to generate this one and then this configuration the wave determinant corresponding to the configuration we already know because they are generated out of the excitation from the Hattrefog determinant. What is unknown in this case is this configurations uh, coefficient the linear combination coefficient and we use linear variation to utilize to determine the coefficient. So let us take this example. So in the Hattrefog picture this the portion up to blue was occupied and what happens in the CI in the singly excited configuration you excite one of the electrons and put it into a virtual orbital. So you excite one electron from the occupied and put it on a virtual. Uh, if similarly any of this electron can get, get excited and up to the time only one electron ex excited that is called a singly excited configuration. In the case of doubly excited configuration you excite two electrons from the occupied orbital to the virtual orbital. Now there can be any of these two electron excited and that will lead to various doubly excited configuration. Similarly three electron excitation will lead to triply excited configuration, four electron excitation will lead to quadruply excited configuration and so on this thing will go on. Now when you take all the possible configuration obtained by arranging n electrons and 2k spin orbitals in 2k c n way this configuration can be used in a linear combination to form a full CI wave function because it has all the possible configurations possible by distributing the electrons. So this is how a full CI wave function will look like. This wave function will give the exact wave function within that particular one electron basis set and that is why full CI is so important. However, practical computation taking this form of the wave function is not possible except in very small molecules and very small basis sets which does not really have any chemical sense because remember to get to the exact energy I need to go up in both the axes in the one electron basis set axis as well as in the wave function accuracy axis. So practical computations are not possible but what we can do that we can choose the important configuration which is necessary to describe a particular kind of system or particular kind of property and do practical calculations out of it. So the correlation energy in the case is of course given by this form of the Schrodinger equation and this is a total energy and the correlation energy is obtained by subtracting the E0 or the Hattrefock energy out of it and this is how the correlation energy can be expressed where your H is your Hamiltonian this epsilon 0 is the exact energy, psi 0 is the full CI wave function, phi, phi 0 is the full CI wave function where H is the electronic Hamiltonian, epsilon 0 is the exact energy, phi 0 is the full CI wave function, psi 0 is the Hattrefock wave function and psi T C D T U is the doubly excited configuration and C is the corresponding coefficient. To describe the correlation energy in the CI picture you actually need only the doubly excited configuration but this doubly excited configuration actually sees the effect of singly excited configuration and the all other excited state configuration 
uh, through the interaction between them. Now, as we said that full CI cannot be used for any practical system, so you need to truncate. Now, depending upon up to what order of excitation you are truncating, uh, that gives you the name. So, if you only truncate up to the single excitation, that gives you configuration interaction single. If you truncate up to double excitation, it gives you configuration interaction singles and doubles, configuration interaction singles, double, triples. If you take up to three body excitations, you can go to CISD TQ if you have to take quadruply excited configuration. Among them, CISD is the most widely used approach and this scales as n to the power 6 power of the basis cell. Remember, compare with the example of MP2. MP2 was scaling as, as the n to the power 5 in the absence of any approximation. And other important thing is that CIS does not improve over Hattie-Fock for ground state energy. Because of the Slater rules, it cannot and Brunian's theorem, the singly excited configuration cannot over, cannot interact with the uh, ground state configuration. And because of that CIS cannot give any improvement over the Hattery-Fock energy. However, CIS can change the wave function and change the properties as well as CIS can give you excited state. So, in the excited state, the CIS is the 0th order or the dominant configuration. So, when we will discuss excited state, we are going to talk more about CIS. Now, merits and demerits of truncated CI. The advantage is that the variational natures guarantee a minima in the energy. Not only that because these methods are variational, the calculation of property is very easy. You can just calculate the property at least the first order property you can calculate it like an expectation value. So, you do not need to do anything additional for property calculation. The full CI does not depend upon the reference wave function. So, it does not really matter what reference wave function you are using your hattery fog has not giving you proper behavior may not be suitable for the full CI, none of them actually is going to matter. On the other hand, truncated CIs are not size extensive. Uh, we are going to know the size about size extensivity in the next slide, uh, but remember this is an important property that is why you cannot use CI for any practical calculation truncated CI. Secondly, the CI methods have very high computational cost. Because it is n to the power 6 scaling even in the CISD approximation, so they are of very little practical use, especially in the fact that they do not give you very well energies, good energies, size extensive energies. So, they are not as popular as MP2 because of its low scaling. Now, let us see a little bit what is size extensivity. So, there are three terms which we are going to discuss one is size consistency, size extensivity, and strict separability. So, these three terms are often used interchangeably while discussing wave function theories, but they have they are very three separate things and have very different meaning. So, first thing is size extensivity. So, this term was introduced in analogy to the size extensive properties in thermodynamics. A quantum chemical model like CC or full CI should provide size extensive energy in the sense that the energy should grow linearly with the number of electrons in the system. So, this is related to the scaling behavior of the energy with respect to the number of electron. So, this is a mathematical property. Size consistency has to do with the ability of a model to properly describe the entire potential energy surface of a system. For example, at the equilibrium geometry, but when all the elements are far apart also as well as intermediate region everywhere if the model can describe the wave function properly it is called size consistency. So, size consistency concept is thus more of a system dependent problem than a property of an approximate quantum chemistry model. So, one particular quantum chemistry model can be size consistent for a one system may not be size consistent for another system and FCI is always size consistent does not matter for which system you are using. On the other hand, the Hattery-Fock method, the so popular one may not be size consistent and then will get translated to an approximate electron correlation method. For example, if I try to dissociate hydrogen, in the restricted Hattery-Fock picture, this will get dissociated into H plus and H minus. Whereas, we know the correct dissociation behavior for H2 molecule is into two neutral hydrogen atoms. So, if I do a restricted Hattery-Fock, of course, Hattery-Fock is not size consistent. And on the top of it, even if I do couple cluster, truncated level, this will not give me size consistent energies because my reference state was not size consistent. 
So size consistency is a more strict criteria than a size extensivity because size extensivity is a method dependent phenomena. Whereas in case of size consistency, not only it's a method dependent, it's a system dependent also because your hat tree fork has to be size consistent first. So size consistency is generally more difficult to achieve. And the third criteria is called a strict separability. So in the case of strict separability, what happens is that the idea is that if a system is composed of non-interacting fragment A and B such that I can write the Schrodinger equation of the total system like this and the Schrodinger equation for the individual system A and B like this. So this is the Schrodinger equation for the composite system and these are the Schrodinger equation for the individual system. Now if the systems are composed of non-interacting fragment like they are separated at infinite distance. In that case, I can write the Hamiltonian as a separable Hamiltonian. So, HAB can be HA and HB. Under this condition, if the wave function model is strictly separable, this will fulfill the following condition that my wave function AB can be written as the product of their individual wave function and the energy can be written as a sum of the individual wave function. So, to test the separability, we will go to the next problem. So, what we will do is that we will take a helium 7 system. Uh, so, one central helium atom and there are 6 helium atom in octahedral configuration, the geometry is given. So, they are at separated at, at a distance of 10 angstrom. So, in this case what it should happen is that if I calculate the energy of 7, 1 helium atom and multiply it with 7 that should give me the same energy of the helium 7 cluster. We will test in this case that if I do hattery fog MP2 and CISD, does it really give me the energy of helium 7 cluster if I calculate energy of 1 and multiply it with 7. So, this will be one of the other homework problem for this week. So, in this lecture, we have came to know about configuration interaction and what is its demerit and we have seen that truncated configuration interactions are does not follow size extensivity that is the correct scaling behavior for with the of the energy with respect to the number of electron that is why they cannot be used for practical application and we need to go for method which actually follows size extensivity. And one of the method is couple cluster and we are going to see in the next class that in the couple cluster even with the truncated form of the wave function you actually get size extensive energy.